Luke, according to Luke chapter 18, verses 1. Can we get that on the board, please? The parable where his word appeared was taught with the intention of saving men from uh, faint-heartedness and weakness in prayer. Our Lord wanted to teach us to guard against negligence and encourage and bring about uh, persistence. We cannot have two opinions regarding the importance of exercise of this uh, indispensable quality in our prayer. Luke chapter 18 verses 1. Persistent prayer is a mighty move of the soul towards God. It is stirring of the deepest sources of soul towards the throne of heavenly grace. Luke chapter 18 verses 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men what? Ought to what? Ought to highlight that in your Bible or write it down in your notes. You take some notes this morning. Men ought to pray. Prayer is important, sis. Coming from Pastor Ram and laying hands on you is just part of the anointing. When you come prepared, let me tell you something. It is so important that we prepare our heart for a miracle. When you pray and you set yourself and you prioritize your life, God is going to work things for you. This brings me to imagine if the church can only pray. Can you imagine what can happen? I've been, I've been, I, 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 I've been, I, I've been actually doing a survey on something. I said that among the people that wants to make confusion and chaos in churches, if they should only pray, can you imagine what the body of Christ would be this day? You know, it, it is sad that there's more chaos and confusion is in the body of Christ than the world. Hello, church. It's embarrassing for a pastor to tell you that. Yes, it is. People tend to make more confusion in the church than the world. Because what happened? Satan works within them. And let me tell you something. If somebody have a prayer life, they will never talk negative talks. Just imagine, you want to know if somebody has a prayer life? Listen to their conversation. If they have problem with this brother and that sister and this preacher and that preacher, it's just they don't have a prayer life. Can you take the heat off from up here? We have to remember, saints of God, if we got a prayer life, we will touch our neighbors. If we have a prayer life, we will touch our family members. You know, last night being at that wedding, we were, we have church folks and we have folks that doesn't believe in God. We didn't share no gospel, but they all wanted to come to church. They, we did not share gospel, we did not preach gospel, we did not do anything. We let them know what we stand for as Christians. And these people just wanted to like, wow. All they're saying is, wow. Look at these people, how they conduct. And they try to blend themselves in. They wanted a wow, this church got to be great. This church got to be... Just because of what are you showing the world that you have? Let me teach you. I, I'm really going to go out of what I have to teach you this morning. But you know why some of you can't win your friends to Christ? It's because the conversation you're having with them. Do you know why some of your family member doesn't respect you and would not come to church with you? It is because the lifestyle you're living. A lot of times I learn something, saints of God. I would just stop, stop to tell somebody hello and they want to know who am I. And for the time I tell them, I pass to a church, they say, well, I want to come to your church. Without telling them Jesus Christ is Lord. Because you know what? The Bible says we are the light. You have a prayer life, you're going to have the anointing. Saints of God, we all want the anointing. I've discovered something lately, Pastor Roger, I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but laying hand and making an impartation doesn't give you an anointing. Prayer brings the anointing in your life. Prayer is the thing. I, when I've discovered that, I was in awe. I was like, the more I pray, the more anointing, the, the anointing flow. I've recognized it, and people have been recognizing that. As we know you just get out. Some people will just know when I get out of fasting and prayer. I mean, Friday night, we have a ball of a time, and quite a few people say, ah, oh, no, you were fasting. Because you know what? There's a difference when you seek God. Even when you go through situation, when you pray, you will tackle the situation differently. You will handle things differently. You will know how to stay calm. Let me tell you, when you have a perfect prayer life, saints of God, things will just happen in its perfect timing. And we have to understand, when we carry a prayer life, then people is going to see the difference within us. 
It is time that the church come back. Amen. I, I love shouting hallelujah. I love praising God. I love getting every one of you jumping on the chair. You know my style. Pentecostal preacher. But no, sometimes we got to come back to grassroots. And all of that is good. But how do we align our life? We can avoid a lot of problems if we have a perfect prayer life. I will show you the difference between the New Testament church and the church today. The church today is more packed out in a revival meeting than a prayer meeting. But we're using the word revival wrong. Revival meeting is not when the church has this big jam session, everybody dancing, fiery preaching. Revival is when you see a packed out church can pray. Revival can hit your house when you pray. Salvation can only come to your house when you seek God. Pastor Robin, how, do you tell, how can you prove that according to the word of God? Zacchaeus wasn't in a revival meeting for salvation. Zacchaeus wasn't in a big brunch of crowd with heavy music playing. Now you know we're all into music and so, so don't get me wrong, pastor doesn't believe in me. We're all of that. Come Friday night, boy, you'll get it up on. But check this out. Zacchaeus went about to seek the Lord. And he seek God in a very uncomfortable position. Did you ever think about that? Zacchaeus wasn't on the church altar. Zacchaeus did not take a shower, put on a nice robe and nice fancy tie with a beautiful, wonderful hairstyle. Zacchaeus didn't do any of that. He wanted to seek the Lord's attention. He went up to a sycamore tree for the Lord was passing by. He went into the gap. He knew where God was moving. It is time that we come to that place to know where God is moving. Stand in the gap so that he can recognize us. A lot of times Jesus is passing on Jericho and we want to be in, 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 in Samaria. If Jesus is in Bethany, go to Bethany. Pastor, what are you saying here? Well, if I know Jesus is working in this area of my life, let me stay in this area of my life and allow the Spirit of God to work for me. Do you believe that here this morning? That is exactly what Zacchaeus did. He went because he knew where the Lord was heading. It is very important that we understand the times of God's move. It is very important to know that the church has to come back to prayer. Are you there with me this morning? I love you so much because you're so much taking it in. Let's turn to the book of Acts chapter 12 and verses 5. Acts chapter 12 and verses 5, write this down. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. From who? Are you there with me? Powerful. From the what? Who is behind the, the, the computer? Can you? Okay. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Talking about bondage, talking about trouble. If you look at the word prison, you're looking at trouble. But prayer was made without ceasing of the... Uh, talk to me a little bit. We're going to make some noise also, you know. Prayer was made without ceasing from the... Say from us. Who are the church? So the Bible is saying here, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Somebody was in prison, but he could not pray. Uh -huh. According to what I, my interpretation here is that Peter was in such a situation that his prayer couldn't do anything much then. But the church prayed. And it was very important who did they pray to. They were making their request known unto who? Are you there with me? In the text we find something taking place that seems to be missing in many churches today. That is church members praying for church members. Nobody wants to take the time off and pray. Get the phone out from there. In this particular case, a church member was in trouble. We saw that according to Acts 12, 5, that Peter was in trouble. Did you recognize it? I want us to take this thing 
And I want you to put yourself in this situation. The Apostle Peter is on death row. And all petition to commute, com commute his sentence has been exhausted. But I've come to tell you that prayer changes things. Prayer changes people and circumstances. When all else fails, pray. There's nothing can deliver you but prayer. In the early church, corporate prayer was the standard. The early church is a model for our churches today. Let's turn to the book of Acts chapter 3 and verses 1. The Bible says, because of time, I'm going to rush it just right. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. It tells me here, according to the book of Acts, the church had daily prayer. Let me ask you a question here. When last you take a day off just because you want to pray? I've never, I, probably once somebody came here and said, Pastor, can you open the church? I want to pray. Do you know how important if you can ask as a pastor, can I use the church for prayer today and dedicate eight hours of prayer? Do you know what that could do for your life? In Acts 5.42, the record is that church members met day after day in the temple courts and from house to house. In other words, they had old-fashioned prayer meeting. Do you remember when saints would come together, not for chatting and chewing, but for the purpose of getting down on their knees in prayer for one another, their churches, their family, and their communities? I tell you much, most of the people, when they get together on the phone and get together with one another and talk about the pastor in the church and somebody else in the church. Ouch. So often today we find that many church people are only concerned about themselves and their own problems. And when they do visit each other's houses, the conversation is more than everybody's business than it's about petitioning God. It's not happening here, right? Don't lie because God's presence is here. But here in the book of Acts chapter 12, 5, we find a church praying without what? Ceasing. For one of their very own. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous avail it much. Let me drop a pin here and say something. And don't answer me. When last you heard a believer sick and you went in aid for them? When last you know of a member of your church had problems and you went in aid for them? Well, that's a pastor job. We're paying him salary, let him do it. And even it's more bad that some people sick, they don't even make a phone call to let us know they're sick, but they expect you to work a miracle. Well, he's prophetic. He should know that I sick. I mean, several times I talk to people, I didn't see you to church. Well, you should know I was sick. How am I going to know? I'm not living at your house. And if somebody do tell me, you'll sit and talk to me. No, we're going to get serious, saints of God. I, I, I'm really studying the New Testament church. And God doesn't expect us to change. Are you blessed this morning? I kind of getting a little scared here. Prayers of the righteous availeth much. Not of the ungodly. I used to ask God, how come the ungodly prosper like that and I'm not prospering like that? Hmm. But if you look at something, the Bible says, prayer of a righteous man is going to avail much. Am I righteous? Saints, I want you to know that there is a great power and great deliverance possible through prayer. You can check the records on that for yourself. The pages of the, 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 the Bible are laced on line with accounts of prayer. Moses prayed and God spared Israel from judgment. Did you ever read that? The children of Israel were saved from judgment. Joshua prayed and God caused them. Call those two brothers and tell them to get back in church. All right, look at me. Don't look.